Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and today we're gonna to take a look at this thing, which is the HP ProDesk 400 G4 Mini. Now this is another one liter PC that's part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro series. And specifically, we have looked already at a whole bunch of HP Elite Desk models, but now we wanna look at an HP Pro desk because they look very similar, but there's actually some big differences. And those big differences may not really surface if you're just kind of looking at online listings, but I wanna talk about them today because I actually think that this particular unit right here was one of the top three or maybe bottom three worst values of any units that we've purchased. Now, I mentioned earlier that as part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro series, we're taking a look at a whole bunch of different units. And one of the reasons that we got this is I actually wanted to look at a whole bunch of different ProDesk models. So we have the HP ProDesk 400 G4 Mini here, which is the Intel version, but we have the 405 G4 Mini here, which is the AMD Ryzen version that we're gonna look at in the future. And we're not just looking at the AMD versions of these systems. Oh no, because, well, this is the 400. So what's the difference between the ProDesk 400 and the ProDesk 600? So we got the 600 G4 as well. And then perhaps what is the biggest difference, there's not just the 400 ProDesk, but we also are looking at the 800 Elite Desk to look at what those differences are. And what you've probably noticed during this segment is that all of these systems look very similar, but they have some pretty wildly different feature sets. and. HP's naming convention is actually really hard to get through, and that's probably why we spent too much money on this ProDesk 400G4. And hey, if you want to support Project Tiny Mini Micro, one way you can do that is you can go to that Teespring link down below, and you can go to the STH merch shop and get awesome STH merch like this wonderful premium t-shirt. I think this is the gold t-shirt that I'm wearing today. And you can go buy one of those. It supports us. I think it also supports Teespring and YouTube. But anyway, that's how we're paying for this thing. Okay, so let's go through the hardware real quick because I think everybody likes to see that stuff. And first thing we're gonna look at is just the front panel. Now, what we get here is we actually get two USB 3 ports. And these are USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, I think. So they're five gigabit per second ports, not the newer Gen 2 ports, which would give us 10 gigabits per second. You also see that these are type A ports. We don't have a type C port on the system. For those of you who are headphone enthusiasts, there's actually a headset, so headphone and microphone jack, combo jack, and then there's also another headphone jack on the front of the system. On these HP units, we only see front audio, and that's including all those ProDesk and Elite Desk systems I just showed you, they all only have front audio. When we move to the rear of the unit, we see something that's kind of interesting. So the first thing that you might notice here is the fact that there are two DisplayPort cutouts. One of them on our system is actually covered. And what we found out was that you're supposed to have two display ports, but this one's covered. When we actually looked at the motherboard underneath this thing, we saw that this actually has the display port header. So when we remove this little cover, we can actually use this display port port. I think it was just cheaper for HP to make a single motherboard instead of making two different motherboards. But if you do see this, know that you can get another display port output, or at least you have a chance to get another display port output by just removing that little cover. You also see in the back of the system that we have an HDMI port. Now that HDMI port is in an optional slot. So some of these systems that we have have VGA ports. I think there's also serial options. You can also get a third display port there. Just something to keep in mind. Now USB on the ProDesk 400 G4 Mini is really important to understand because unlike the ProDesk 600, what we actually get is a different port configuration. So we get two USB 3 ports, but then we get two USB 2 ports. Now on the ProDesk 600 series, which is kind of the next level up, up, we actually get four USB 3 ports. And so that's a difference, but a very important difference between the 400 and 600 line. You also see that up front, the ProDesk 400 G4 didn't have a front panel USB type C port, but the other, the Elite Desk 800, and then also the ProDesk 600 G4s did. Okay, moving inside the system, it's actually not as easy as some of the other systems that we tested. So there's still just a single screw and HP does a great job keeping the screw in there and retained in there. So it makes it really easy. If you have to go and service it, you're not gonna lose that screw. You just pop off the cover once you've undone that screw and then you're inside. Now inside the system, we have a pretty standard layout. So up top, we have the CPU, we also have memory. And what HP actually does is that they put the memory underneath the fan. So there's this little slide out 
bit on the fan that you can actually go pull the fan out and you can get to the two SODIM slots. And this takes DDR4 memory. And depending on the processor, that kind of gives you the speed. Now, processor wise, that is actually one of the reasons that we think that this was not the best buy. We spent about $380 for the system. And this actually came with the Core i3 8100T. Now, the real reason that we got the system is because we were buying a whole bunch of these. And I didn't know about the Elite Desk differences at the time. And also, I just kind of want to look at the different Pro Desk options, including the AMD one. So this, we just kind of needed this to complete our set. But $380 for a Core i3 8100T system that's in this configuration, I think it's just way too much. The other thing that you'll notice on the bottom here is that we have a hard drive. Now, this is actually a Western Digital 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's not a big hard drive. It's kind of actually not really even big if you look at SSDs are very easy to get a half terabyte SSD these days. That's very inexpensive. And the other thing that you're going to notice is that this uses the older HP retention model. So you have this kind of hard latch here and you have to unlatch something and then push the drive out. And then there's little pegs on the thing that you need to be able to get it into the metal assembly anyway. And it's just a real pain to go and service a drive like this. If we contrast that to the HP Elite Desk models, you're going to see a lot more toolless service. And so as you move up in the HP line, you actually get things like the ability to service things without having all these screws. And the screws are not just on the drive itself, so we don't just have a nice plastic tray on the drive itself. What we also get is we have screws to be able to get this entire metal assembly out. So whereas the newer systems, you'll see that they're just a kind of a plastic insert and they're easy to pop in and out. This system actually has, you have to undo two screws to be able to get the entire assembly out. A lot of the Dell and Lenovo units have gone toolless these days. So this kind of feels like really old. And this is not an old system by any means. This was actually produced in the last quarter, so Q4 of 2019. So it's less than a year old. Once you've moved that hard drive assembly out, what you'll see underneath is actually something that's really standard for this class of system. So you're gonna see first a M2 drive slot and you can put NVMe SSDs in that drive slot. That's basically what we would use it for. But we actually think that if I were gonna go buy the system again, I would wanna find a system that already has an NVMe drive in there or it doesn't have a hard drive because I just don't really see the value in paying for that. The other slot that you're gonna see is a Wi-Fi slot. There are less configuration options on this system. So I think basically the only ones that we've seen are these Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. We haven't seen anything from Qualcomm or other vendors. And so that's just something that's different also on the 400 series is that there's less configuration options. There's also less configurations on the CPU. One thing that is interesting on the CPU options is that they have options like say getting the Core i5 plus 8500T instead of just the Core i5-8500T. And what that plus is actually means that there's Optane memory. And so these systems can utilize Optane memory. So if you do see the plus, that's just what that means. Overall performance of the Core i3-8100T was actually about what I expected, but it was also a lot lower than I think you would want these days. And one of the key reasons for that is that if you look in this generation, the Core i5-8500T was actually a six core processor instead of the four core processor that we get in Core i3 series. Adding 50% more cores also helps just add more performance in the system. And so we actually think that that was a much better buy. So if you're going to buy a system like this, I think that the Core i5-8500T is probably the best option. The Core i7 options tend to have larger premiums. And as a result, I don't know if that's the best value. At the end of the day, these CPUs are limited to a 35 watt TDP. So at some point, you just kind of hit a thermal limitation. And so having extra threads with the Core i7 is actually great. But on the other hand, I think the Core i5 is a really good value option. Option. Power consumption wise, we generally saw at idle just over 10 watts to 10, 11 watts. These are pretty quiet and low power devices, but if you do ramp up things like, you know, if you're running some kind of really hard CPU algorithm and you do get the power up, you can get into the just high 40s, low 50 watt range, and that will spin up the fans. And so these systems do become audible at that point. Most office workloads, you're never gonna really hear that. And also most server workloads where frankly, you're just not using that much CPU, you're using more memory. You're not gonna see that fan ramp. Now these systems came and our system came with Windows 10 Pro, which is actually a great value savings. We've also run Proxmox uh, and other De Debian based Linux distributions like Ubuntu on these and they work just fine. They didn't come with that from the factory, so you're not gonna get support on it, but frankly, it just works out of the box because it's all really pre pretty common hardware. The NIC is a Realtek RTL 8111 NIC. And so it's a standard one gig option. It's not as nice as some of the Intel NICs. So you see a lot of these systems, the higher end systems with the Intel i219 LM, which is probably a better NIC, but at the same time, it's just another way that HP is saving costs in the system. Now we're gonna put a bigger breakdown in terms of the cost and some of the other units that we've gotten on the website. So there's an STH main site article that's gonna accompany this video that we have more specs and we have a lot more detail in. And we're gonna have that 
detailed breakdown there. But realistically, when we looked at the other options that we got, this was the worst value. The AMD version, for example, I think we got for about $300, which is $80 less and also came with an SSD, whereas this came with a hard drive. We also got the Proda 600 with the six core processor and it was less money as well. Now on the last page of the STH main site article, we're actually going to put a little guide to how HP does their naming conventions, because even just G3 to G4 isn't necessarily always an upgrade because HP has a very interesting way that they name products. And if you're not familiar with it, like I wasn't when we started this, well, then it's going to be a little bit weird to be able to go into eBay or some other marketplace and find used systems because you're not going to necessarily know how to compare them. But we kind of have a guide in terms of the way to think about the HP naming structure. So that way you can get into these systems and find something that really meets your needs. Again, this is a great system. It's just for $380, it just clearly wasn't worth it. Now we're going to go through all of the other systems that I showed you today. You know, the ProDesk 405, we're going to go to ProDesk 600, we're going to look at the Elite Desk that we showed. Those are going to be subsequent videos, we'll run this as an entire series. But hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click on subscribe so you can turn on notifications to see whenever we come out with new videos. We're going to try coming out with about one every week or so. Maybe we're going to up the cadence a little bit in this quarter, but that's basically what our plan is. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.